What annoys me about the industry, oh my God, how is someone meant to become something if they don't see it? It's not the 1950s, it's not Mad Men, like we can move on from this point. The next advertising guru might look like me. And have the versatility of a community in there rather than this homogenous identity. It feels to be lip service. I get the impression that maybe it's not that people actually care, but it's, they just see it as you know, the next big thing to follow. I think a lot of things are, are done the same way and are seen the same way. And I think until companies open themselves up properly and organically, then it's just going to stay the same way. If people from a certain uh, marginalised backgrounds aren't applying to these jobs in the first place, then how are they supposed to make the industry more um, inclusive? Advertising as an industry, the potential to kind of change the narrative in society and shape the way that culture moves and stuff. There's so much untapped potential, I think, and changes that can be made, positive changes through advertising. My name is Tita Magaji Williams. Um, I'm actually a British Nigerian boy, but I was born in London and born and raised in Barking, East London. The night school has been like the most dope, fantastic experience I've had in terms of like developing my creative voice and my understanding of my own core narrative. Growing up in Barking, growing up, and for a lot of people oh, that, that are also on the course, this has been an opportunity that doesn't come by often. And like, I'm truly grateful for having access to these doors and open like conversations of all kinds of super cool professionals that I wouldn't have had otherwise. <laughs> I want to conquer the world and have um, movements in, in uh, the media, like music. But I also want to be a strategist and I want to help brands or companies, etc., communicate to people like myself in areas like this and speak the language of the youth. Having done the night school, I know that those doors are open and I know that I now have the skill set, the, the self-confidence, the professional confidence and the industry insights to know that I can be there and it's just a matter of time. We need a sort of plurality of genders. We need a plurality of backgrounds. It shouldn't be London-centric when we're telling stories that should go to the entire UK. There needs to be women at the top. There needs to be black and brown, all kinds of different voices represented in the advertising industry. And it's frankly disappointing that, it, that it's just not. And it's also just bad business sense because we know that diverse companies are more competitive. I'm frustrated by companies that claim or organizations in general that claim to want to attract a diverse audience. They're like, yeah, we want to speak to young people. But are they hiring young people? Yeah, we want to speak to people of colour. But are they hiring people of colour? And I'm frustrated by the unwillingness to try new things, break the mould of the male, pale and stale, typical advertising guru. This isn't the days of Don Draper anymore. And like, I want the industry to embrace that the newest advertising guru might look like me. My name is Hannah Vatandus and I'm currently a strategy intern at RGA. Um, I've only been here a week, so it's kind of my first week. <laughs> I'm originally Iranian, so I grew up in Wembley with my parents and my sister. So I just finished studying history at university um, and then I went on to Brixton Finishing School. Brixton Finishing School has probably been one of the most valuable things in my life. It opened up access to so many people that I would never have got access to before. All these different agencies that we got to visit that I probably would have never got to step foot into. Um, and it kind of pushed me towards strategy, actually. So that was a really interesting experience for me. And the people I got to meet were just amazing. <laughs> um, so I think RJ was already kind of in my head um, as I was doing the course. Um, and then they gave us the chance to pitch for an internship. So I kind of went for that pitch not really thinking I'm gonna get it. It was kind of just a long shot, but I was so excited um, and worked really hard for it actually. 
um, and I ended up getting it. The first week here has been really insightful already. I just know I'm gonna learn so much um, in the space of three months. Um, I, I think it's really for me because you get to have that balance of being creative and also that logical mindset as well, being able to get insights into people's lives. I think having that as part of your job is something super interesting. So hopefully I can work my way up to be a senior strategist um, and also work in an agency that allows me to kind of not adhere to kind of a traditional mindset and also be able to be yourself as well. If I could change one thing about the industry, it would probably be to make it more inclusive to people of all different backgrounds. At the moment, it's normally a recommendation of a friend to a friend and getting them in. Um, and I don't think that really does them a favor. It just uh, means that they're only appealing to one market. You know, they're just second guessing and they're not really getting true human insights, which I think uh, that's what the industry should be about. One thing I could change would be to kind of encourage agencies to go to more schools because, you know, if people from a certain uh, marginalized backgrounds aren't applying to these jobs in the first place, then how are they supposed to make the industry more um, inclusive? Hi, my name is Nadine and we're in West London in my family church. I grew up in West London um, in a super, super multicultural area. Um, myself, I am Jamaican, Indian and English. So even in my family, we're always so like open to other cultures and different kinds of people, different practices. You can imagine what my Christmas table looks like. Um, it gave me like a unique perspective on a lot of things. Through university, I kind of like, you go through experiences and you learn more about yourself. And I realised like the creative industry is definitely where I can see myself growing and where I feel like I'd be able to contribute the most to as well and um, push for the changes I want to see in the world. So before I started night school, I was definitely like sure that I wanted to be a creative, but night school kind of opened my eyes and kind of gave me words to the type of creative that I was and opened my eyes to all of these different roles that people have and things that they can do and kind of helped me find my place. Things can really go like up and I feel like everyone wants to see progress and wants to see more inclusion and wants to, you know, talk about inequalities and talk about all of these things that were kind of bubbling under the surface before. Not many people will really work for a company that doesn't represent their values. I feel like it kind of puts people in the creative industry at a point where they have to, they are held accountable to the people that are working for them creatively to kind of represent their values and also represent the values of their audience. As a minority ethnic woman, I can kind of tell when a company is super for like empowerment of women of colour or just women or people of colour in general. I feel like the industry is really at a point where if you're going to want to tell these stories, you need to have people that have these stories in your creative room and in your creative spaces and have the versatility of a community in there rather than this homogenous identity. One thing I would definitely change about the industry is the whole mentality about what do we mean by diversity? We need to think of a bigger thing. We need to think of intersectionality, as I said, and also inclusivity. Having companies from the industry enter the schooling system from a much earlier stage would be really beneficial because it would mean that people, when they're a lot younger, would be aware of how accessible the industry is and what there is out there for them. I was super fortunate to get a scholarship to the SCA, but even with the scholarship which covers tuition, there's no funding available for kind of like living costs. So it immediately stops people that aren't in a position of privilege. So I think something that I would change would be different methods, different points of entry for the industry. Just the barriers to entry are so high and the fact that, you know, even if you're just doing a quick search on Indeed or wherever, creative jobs aren't going to come up. You know, it's who you know, it's having the power of the network and I think that's something that BFS has capitalised on, is giving you that network in place to be able to advance your career. It's all good and well having diverse voices at the bottom, but unless you have that leaky pipeline to the top, stopped <laughs> and you have diverse talent getting to the top CEOs and decision makers, then it's almost pointless. 
If I could change one thing, it would definitely be making the industry more open and having a platform that um, just appeals to a community that might necessarily feel kind of undermined with regards to the mainstream media right now. But it's beautiful, like it's a beautiful frustration because it means that progression needs to be made. This industry exists, you know, in order to be successful, you don't need to go down the tra traditional academic routes. Like you can be a really successful person by also being a creative.